What's up everybody? Welcome back to Oak Oaks TV. Back in the garage today, working on stuff. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. This is the motor you've seen before. Uh, I've been working on this motor for a while, uh, but I finally got tired of it. <laughs> so I sold it. It's going in that brown car um, for Bobby and Sheila. You've seen that car, air ride, super sparkly bass boat paint. It's sitting right there, I'm looking at it. You can't see it though, but I'll show you. You know the one. Uh, but we're putting this motor in there for him. This thing's crazy. It's a two liter something, uh, but we're putting all dub shop EFI on this car. I got everything polished. I got everything kind of on. This is basically how this motor is going to look when it's in the car. Uh, I mean, there's, there's going to be another piece right here and there's going to be an exhaust on it, but that's it. All the wires are hidden. I got everything as clean as possible. We, we had it sent down and had it painted, uh, all the plastics and everything painted to match. Uh, the colors on that car, the, the cream color, super nice. So it's going to look fantastic. We're going to make this thing run. Before we can do that, I need to add some breathers. Uh, we put these polished valve covers on there because I like them. You know, they don't leak. They're kind of look good on this motor. Uh, no one's really going to see it anyways because it's all hidden. Um, but we got to put breathers on there. So we picked up these CB Performance uh, bolt-in breathers. We're going to punch a hole in these. I'm going to show you how and where and why. Uh, so those are going to go actually on the back. But we're going to put those on because this isn't enough. The breather from the tower is not enough. And then we're going to put a breather box kind of back here once it's in the car and, and get all this in there. Good stuff. You need it. Uh, we're also going to add this to that. Yeah. That is a Sublime Classic Restoration 17 gallon aluminum gas tank. That's for the bus. Uh, we're putting in that big 1904 Bowen motor in there and that thing's gonna be thirsty. It's gonna wanna eat a lot of gas. This is my solution to that for when we take these big long trips. You know, Chris wants to go on trips now. Mitchie's got that bus. He wants to take trips now. Uh, we're all putting these big tanks in there, uh, but this tank does not have a fuel return and I, that's something that I want. So we're gonna add one. I'm gonna show you how to do it the easy way without welding. Uh, it's gonna be relatively leak free, I think. <laughs> a little bit custom, but we're gonna get it done. Uh, you can see right there the size comparison between the new tank and the original bus tank. That one's a barbecue. We cut that one up and turned it into a, a grill a while back, uh, just for funsies. It actually works pretty good. But that's not the one out of the bus. The bus one is still in there. But we're going to swap them out with this when we do that motor swap. That's a whole thing. It's coming up. You're going to see it. Uh, but today, we're putting in breathers on that motor. And we're putting a fuel return on that tank. Here we go. All right, first thing we got to do, take these things off. You know how to do it. Get your handy valve cover, remover tool, and just kind of walk that bail off. Uh, be careful because sometimes those are going to... Those are gonna leak some oil, so you wanna put a rag down or something. I know these are pretty leaked out because I just cleaned them out and they're, they're all right. Uh, so you gotta pay attention which side you're doing. It doesn't matter because they can go on either side, but once you punch a hole for the breather, they're gonna be only for one side because you want that breather to come out the back. Um, and the reason for that is if you try to put it here, you're gonna run into the problem like we had on the yellow car where the breather comes out right where the spark plug wire is trying to be, right where the intake is trying to be. It's a nightmare trying to get the hose in there. A little better because this shroud is not blocking everything. Wow, there goes my gas tank. It's all right, we're gonna deal with that later. You don't want the, the thing to be in the way. So we're gonna put it on the back here, which is gonna come out behind the firewall and then we'll just bring it up, you know, through the somewhere in here or we'll find somewhere underneath because you don't need to see the breather. We're trying to keep this motor as clean as possible. Uh, this is gonna hide it. This is gonna put it right back here and we'll find a place to put the breather box so you don't see it. It's gonna be super easy. So you gotta pay attention. Actually, we'll go over here. You see the lip where the, uh, the seal goes. These are old crusty seals. We're gonna put some new ones in there when we're done. Uh, so you don't wanna put it too close to the edge here where that's gonna be a problem because you gotta you gotta think, you got a nut, you got a washer, um, but we don't wanna put it too close to the outside either. These things are kinda curved a little bit. You know, so we're gonna kinda put it 
towards the top because the rockers are close here, you know, to the edge. So you got to kind of, you got to visualize it. You know, that's going to clear that rocker for number one. Uh, on the other side, you actually end up having a little bit more room because of the way the rockers are pointing. Uh, but towards the top, kind of towards the middle, you know, right about, right about there, I think, is going to be good. And we got these fins. That's going to help us uh, to sort of locate. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and drill a little hole right even with that second fin right in the middle. We're going to use our step bit to make that big enough for that uh, reader. Before you go too far, you want to check it. Perfect. Get all that stuff out of there. Uh, now we got an O-ring. Uh, these didn't come with O-rings. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But you want to put an O-ring on the inside. That's going to help with leaks, stopping the leaks. Uh, then you want to put an O-ring on the outside. And then you want to put a washer. You want to put the nut. Just like that. See there? Perfect. Put it on here just to double check it. It's not hitting anything. We got plenty of clearance. You know, that's perfect. So that second rib, that's going to be, that's going to be the one. Uh, then we're going to take our valve cover gasket, put that on there, make sure that we're not pinching it. Perfect. There we go. A breather. All right, now that we know they fit, they don't have any interference on them, we're going to get them nice and tight. We're going to take our, it's a 19 on these. And you know, we're just going to tighten them down. Oops, just enough to crush that O-ring without spreading it out too far. Messed it up here, pinched it. Okay, nice and tight, no leaks. We got an O-ring on the inside, we got an O-ring on the outside. We're good, it's nice and tight. Um, just like that. This is the back of the motor now that you're looking at, by the way. There we go. All right, then what you do, and this hose is comically huge for this, but I don't have the right size. Uh, but you would put that on there with a hose clamp and then you would run this up to your breather, wherever your breather is, but you can see how that's not interfering, you know, with anything. It, it's gonna come up around the exhaust, no problem. These little J-tubes are gonna come around. Uh, it's not interfering with any of the tins or anything. It's it's kind of back here in this void where nothing is, so it's perfect. Um, you can put some of those little clamps on there that, that bend it and hold it in a certain position if you want to. You can zip tie it up to something. Do whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> but the reason you want to do this in the first place is because pressure builds up in these, and that's what causes leaks. It pushes those valve covers out. Those gaskets can't keep the pressure in there, especially with these higher performance, higher RPM motors. Uh, this is going to help kind of stop the leaks and kind of keep the motor breathing freely. You know, the crank turns this way, so this one's not as bad, uh, but you still want to just vent it anywhere you can. We do one in the middle, we do one on the ends. We don't have any problems. Super good. One job done. Moving on to that gas tank. All right. Now we're going to put this uh, fuel return on this thing. And this is tricky, uh, but it's not as bad as you might think. Um, we're going to kind of put it right here. 
there's a baffle about here and when the fuel is squirting back into the tank we don't want it to aerate uh, we don't want it to come out all foamy and you know and it's sitting in there and it's just it's just bad so we want this to dump into the bottom of the tank below the level um, but we don't want this to be down here because then the pressure of the tank is going to try to push fuel the wrong way uh, so up here is perfect I know that it's clear in there there's nothing in there this is pretty thin aluminum uh, so we're going to use uh, this is like a brass fitting here that I picked up I don't know what size this is but a couple of, uh, a couple o-rings and we've got this 3 8 uh, aluminum fuel line that I use to make my hard lines so let's just do it we're gonna punch a hole this is where the strap goes so we don't want to be in that strap area and then it, it bends and the bend ends right here so we kind of want to be like right there it's a thousand dollar gas tank and i'm about to drill a hole in it and again we want to check it for size because we don't want it to be too big. We do want that thing to go easily. And one more. There we go. Perfect. Ah. Needs a nice edge, that cutter. So that's going to poke out from the inside. I'm going to show you how. And then this is going to thread on from the outside. And it's going to sit just like that. And then we connect our fuel line to it. Uh, the way that we're going to get that fuel down to the bottom, that's through this. So we got to measure that. Uh, we don't want it to sit exactly right on the bottom we kind of want it to sit up just a little bit but we also got to put a bend in it uh, so i'm going to try that first right there let's go fast time so you can see me do this and then we'll explain it after that's going to go in there you know it's going to sit you know basically it's going to sit like that but inside the tank it's not touching the bottom so the fuel's not going to get stopped there's enough room to to let it kind of expand and, and get out of the way plus it's going to be filled with fuel mostly i don't usually go below half a tank so it should be submerged uh, and that's going to poke out of that hole i put this little o-ring on there to keep that from moving back uh, and then we've got an o-ring to seal up against the inside uh, like that and then we'll put an o-ring on the outside this is where it gets tricky <laughs> we got to take our our old pal uh, bailing wire here and we got to fish this bailing wire in the hole and we got to try to find it Oh, there we go. Success. And we put this. This is why we have a nice sweeping bend in there. Uh, so we can hopefully. Hopefully get that to go around that corner without digging in. All right, I guess the camera got tired of waiting, <laughs> but I got it. It's in there, uh, and we can. Oh, 
there. And we can feel, you know, it's, it's kind of banging against the side here and now it's, now it's banging against the bottom. So that's kind of where we want it. Gonna get the threads right. All right, we got it. Whew, man, a little crazy. Uh, now we gotta get a wrench, tighten that up. I was not prepared. Oh God, it's like a 19. There we go. And then, I am going to cut all of that off. Look at that. And just like that, now we got a fuel return in that tank with O-rings. It's not gonna leak and it's kind of pointing down like this and it's not touching the bottom. So it's not gonna get blocked, you know, and it's in there, it's perfect. Hell yeah. So we're gonna take a vacuum. I'm gonna stick a vacuum in there with a piece of that hose that we were using over there and just suck up the little aluminums that are in there and then we got it just like that fuel return yeah all right as you can see there's the baffle there's my little pipe and it's just coming up just shy of the uh the bottom i don't know what that weird dent from the inside is that kind of came that way uh, but there we go and then there's our nipple uh, nipple. Sorry kids. G-rated. Uh, anyways, so there it is. It's gonna dump that fuel right to the bottom there. It's got a, you know, that baffle kind of goes, this is sideways, so we're looking at the bottom. Uh, but that fuel can get around that thing and get into the main part of the tank. And then it comes out, where is that thing? Right there. Comes out back here, uh, and that's the main feed. So it's just gonna kind of like recirculate in there. Pretty neat, I think. You know, they make the tanks with those, but this one didn't come with that. And I think that's why Chris didn't, uh, Chris didn't end up taking it. He, he ordered one with the, the little bung on it for a return. Uh, so there we go, that's pretty great stuff. Now our engine has, uh, well, one engine has breathability, one uh, gas tank has returnability. It's gonna be fantastic. I can't wait to get this thing in the bus and get that motor in the bus, but I gotta finish that brown car first. It's killing me seeing all my stuff here ready to go, but I gotta finish that brown car. I gotta get this motor in there because they wanna start doing some shows. Show season's already here. Time's a wasted. So that's the next trick is we gotta get that thing running on the stand with all that EFI and the million wires and everything. Uh, and then have Mario give us a, a remote tune while we're driving. And then after that, it's on to Bobby with a laptop to try and, you know, get the super performance tune that he's looking for. But at least we'll be able to drive it and they'll be able to enjoy it and take it out with this cool new motor. So that's gonna do it for this week. Hit all the links, check out all the friends, get that Amazon store, all that camping gear, all those fancy tools, all that stuff you saw me use, the benders and the flare tool and the cutter and all that, it's all in there. Um, oh yeah, hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment down below. Thanks for watching.